Hi everyone, welcome to the Thinking Crypto YouTube channel where we cover the news, facts, and sentiments about the crypto market. If you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button. Guys, got some very bullish news here about crypto. Crypto is of course the new asset class, it's on the rise. Globally, uh, we are seeing many different countries are putting out their rules and regulations and the big money is coming in from all angles and directions, guys. And uh, I try to share the facts here with you so you see what is taking place. Um, and the first news up here is Australian judge says crypto is a legitimate investment vehicle. Very, very interesting. So let me give you the details. As part of a defamation case in front of the New South Wales or NSW District Court, Judge Judith Gibson allowed cryptocurrency usage as collateral. Uh, this is recognized as a form of investment, Gibson said of cryptocurrency, also acknowledging its volatility according to a, a brief from the Australian Associated Press. Um, the plaintiff vies for crypto usage. As part of the defamation case, the NSW court stated that the accusing party must place $20,000 Australian dollars or approximately $13,000 USD in a bank account guarded by the courts. Should the accusing party lose or secede, the funds would pay for a portion of the def uh, defendant's legal fees. Instead of a bank account, the court allowed the plaintiff to use their cryptocurrency exchange account. Guys, this is very interesting, and it shows that cryptocurrencies cannot be ignored anymore. Governments are talking about it, and it's part of the legal system, part of pop culture, TV. It's, it's seeping into the mainstream, and this is exciting to see because we are the early adopters who are getting in it at the low prices, so we have the opportunity to make significant returns when it, you know the masses start coming into this, guys. And we are on the side of smart money because right now, big money is putting a lot of money uh, i know i said money a lot of times here but they're building the infrastructure investing in the crypto and digital assets but also investing in the hardware software solution services right the infrastructure so this is very very interesting that crypto is being recognized as uh an investment vehicle as collateral very very cool and on the note of crypto cannot be ignored the bis bank of international settlements paper reckons with peer-to-peer Peer-to-peer -peer payments, tokenized securities, central bank digital currencies, the IMF, BIS, central banks, they all are now trying to scramble to put together some plans. They don't want to be disrupted, right? Because cryptocurrencies offer another avenue to move value. And they are all trying to get things done. We see central banks are trying to launch their uh, CBDC, central bank digital currencies, and even like major banks like JP Morgan are scrambling like, hey, we better create our own coin, right? JPM coin. So researchers at the Bank of International Settlements are grappling with the future of payment so much so that their newest quarterly report released Sunday is entirely dedicated to what potent, what that potential revolution holds. So they, I'm not going to go through everything, but they, of course, cover tokenization. We know about tokenization happening on the Ethereum blockchain, XRP ledger, and many different ways, right? Stocks, different assets will be tokenized. And uh, even this, just this week, we heard from Ripple CTO talking about they're expanding the XRP ledger to be able to uh, really really integrate other assets and movement of value on the XRP ledger. So big things ahead. They, of course, talk about the distributed ledger technology. Uh, they talk about central bank digital currencies, also known as CBDCs, and showing you know what that could look like. And, um, and, and some of this we've already seen, but they in this report, they give more details. So they talk about how this is going to affect payments. They talk about Libra and so forth. Um, and it shows, guys, how early we are and where we're headed. They cannot ignore it anymore. And, you know, the great thing about crypto, it's a global movement. And you could be in Africa, any country in Africa. You could be in India. You could be in, in Sweden. You could be in Iceland, right? Uh, Australia. And we, I could send you payments and much uh, faster, much more secure and um, no intermediary, right? So very, very cool, guys. And this is why all these Central banks, IMF, BIS, are scrambling to try to make sure they don't get disrupted. Now, uh, if you guys recall, there were news about this where the BIS exec uh, calls cross-border payments a top priority. And this was earlier in January where he spoke at Davos. So uh, 
I, I have a problem always pronouncing his last name, but he was at, uh, let me see, let me try here, guys. Um, Couture, I hope I said that right. Benoit Couture, I apologize if I butcher that, but he's a chief of the Bank of uh, International Settlements, and he talked about cross-border solutions being the uh, big priority for them, right? He was at Davos saying this, and um, he certainly sees the the disruption that's taking place, and they want to make sure they get ahead of it, and how they can leverage um, crypto and digital assets to do so. And of course, Ripple has always been a big part of that because they've shared the stage with the BIS folks, and Ripple's worked with the working with the IMF, and XRP serves to be a bridge asset for the different CBDCs. We saw that in the World Economic Forum. They outlined Ripple XRP as a wholesale solution for CBDCs. So I believe uh, XRP will be a part of this and central banks around the globe will move their, their fiat currency into a digital format. So that's what's coming. And um, I this is this may not be the sexiest news, you know, because we're all looking for higher prices, but it shows the building and how real this new asset class is, guys. Now, some interesting news here. Um, new Twitter investor may remove Bitcoin advocate Jack Dorsey as CEO. So why is this significant? Jack Dorsey is a big crypto advocate. He's certainly bullish on Bitcoin. Obviously, Twitter just added the little logo for Bitcoin. So, and he has started, of course, Square. Well, he own Square, of course, he's the founder of Square, and they built Square Crypto, the specific segment of the business that handles crypto. And um, it's interesting. So Elliot Management Corp, an activist investor owned by billionaire Paul Singer, has plans to shake up the management at Twitter. So I would hate to see Jack uh, get kicked out because having someone, you know, at that caliber at Twitter, uh, who's advocate of crypto is great. And, we're, you know, we've seen, uh, like I said, the little Bitcoin icon added, he's he comments on Bitcoin and so forth. So let's see how this plays out. But this is this is interesting. Uh, a reported blue as reported by Bloomberg on Saturday, Elliot has taken a large stake in the social media messaging platform. And according to people familiar with the matter has plans to remove Jack Dorsey as CEO. The hedge fund has already nominated four directors to Twitter's board, the sources say. Uh, Dorsey is also the chief of payments firm Square, as mentioned, and has become a darling of the crypto community for his advocacy of Bitcoin. He recently integrated a feature on Twitter that would display an icon for cryptocurrency if Bitcoin tag was posted. So let's see what happens and how things progress here. But regardless, Jack has enough money. He's doing some great things with Square, which obviously deals with payments and integrates crypto. So, uh, but it's still interesting. And uh, I would hate to see him, you know, get pushed out, but let's see what happens. Now, moving ahead, uh, Ethereum decentralized exchange monthly volumes hit all time high. So this is interesting. I hold Ethereum in my portfolio. So decentralized exchanges, also known as uh, DEX, right, as an abbreviation on Ethereum just recorded their highest monthly trading volume, according to data from Ethereum analytics site Dune analytics in february 2020 dex logged over 372 million dollars in trading volume a 62 percent increase from the month prior a uh, february's volume overtook the previous all-time high of 358 million dollars in july 2019 so interesting stats here and um i'm bullish on ethereum and, and there's a lot of DeFi um opportunities on the ethereum blockchain and and there's competitors out there like tezos and so forth so looking good there now something i want to call out guys and i'll tell you why uh, binance ceo's network net worth has doubled in the past year at 2.6 billion dollars according to huron that is huge man Binance CEO uh, Changpeng Zhao is the wealthiest person in crypto in the blockchain space, according to the ninth edition of the Huron uh, Global Rich List. So why is this significant? Because do, do you guys wonder why all of a sudden you saw Fidelity, uh, TD Ameritrade, the parent company of the New York Stock Exchange went back, all these funds and companies and so forth started jumping into the crypto market? When they saw how much money Coinbase and Binance made, guys, off of crypto, they were like, we're coming for that money. They want a slice of that pie and, and they want to capture as much as, of it as possible. Because Binance, yeah, I remember in particular, made more money than Deutsche Bank, you know, as far as uh, revenue and profitability. And that is interesting, right? They made a lot of money than a lot of other funds. And um, 
that's why all the big players are get, getting in. They want a slice of it. It is the new disruptive technology, of course, and uh, it will change things. But these guys certainly want to cut of that those fees, right? They want to make money off this market, guys. So this is interesting, and it shows the potential that's coming. And that's why you have traditional market players getting into the market. Now, on the topic of Binance, uh, as a friendly reminder, I will be interviewing uh, Binance U.S. CEO um, Catherine Cooley. Uh, on Monday, so make sure you're subscribed. I want to make sure I pull up the tweet here. I had it up. Uh, here we go. And so make sure you're subscribed, guys. I'm going to be asking her some interesting questions. She was, of course, head of uh, global liquidity at Ripple, at XRP liquidity at Ripple. So I'll talk to her about that. And now she's heading up Binance and uh, looking forward to that interview. So make sure you subscribe with the notification bell uh, enable, guys, and make sure you thumbs up and share this video. Thank you for your support, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.